Hello and welcome to section 3.7 on the chain rule. In this section, we obtain the rule that allows for differentiating the composition of functions. This will be the final rule for differentiation, which deals with function operations. Before the more technical details, let's try to get a more intuitive understanding of derivatives and the composition of functions. The punchline here is that rates of change multiply. Recall that the composition of functions f and g is the linking together of functions akin to the linking of pipes. When f is composed with g, a function is produced that has g's inputs and f's outputs. That's because f composed with g has two steps. First, an input runs through g, whose output is immediately taken in by f. For example, cars have a certain fuel economy, the average miles per gallon. We can describe the relationship for a car between the miles driven m and the gallons consumed g by writing f of g equals m. Fuel costs are typically not constant. We will flip the price you usually see and report the units in gallons per dollar rather than dollars per gallon. We can describe the relationship between gallons consumed g and the price of gallons d by the function h of d equals g. How would we describe the cost of driving? How do we connect the number of miles driven to the number of dollars spent? Well, we have two functions, h with an input of dollars and an output of gallons, and f with an input of gallons and an output of miles driven. We can link the functions together through composition. We take the composition f of h to represent the cost of driving. Your cost of driving depends upon your fuel economy and the fuel costs. Suppose I drive 300 miles on 10 gallons of gas. That is m equals 300, g equals 10, and f of 10 equals 300. Suppose that where I stop for gas sells gas at $4 per gallon, or one quarter of a gallon for $1. I spend $40, or 10 equals h of 40. The cost function takes in $40 and outputs 300 miles driven. Let's incorporate rates of change into this discussion. This is calculus after all, and without change, well, we might as well be talking about algebra. For fuel economy F, the rate of change would have units of miles per gallon. And for fuel cost H, the rate of change would have units gallons per dollar. The average rate of change for F is 30 miles per gallon, and the average rate of change for H is 0.25 gallons per dollar. So we would assume that the rate for the cost is 30 times a quarter, or 7.5 miles per gallon. We are assuming that rates multiply. This does confirm what we have. The car traveled 300 miles using $40, which equates to 7.5 miles per gallon. Suppose that the price of gas changes to 0.2 gallons per dollar. And suppose that your car's fuel economy has improved by 5 miles per gallon now that you've finally gotten around to getting an oil change. The cost of driving change? Is it now 35 times 0.2, or 7 miles per dollar? Do rates of change multiply? Well, yes. At 0.2 gallons per dollar, that $40 now gets you 8 gallons of gas. And as your car is getting 35 miles per gallon, you will get 280 miles for that $40, which is what we anticipated at 7 miles per dollar. Average rates of change multiply, but not only that. The chain rule says that instantaneous rates of change also multiply. If f and g are differentiable, then the derivative of f composed with g is f prime composed with g times g prime. Focus on f prime times g prime. These are the rates that are being multiplied. Lagrange's notation can be a bit confusing at this stage. Suppose instead that y equals f of u and u equals g of x. The right-hand side of the chain rule can now be written as f prime of u times g prime of x, which we can then convert into Leibniz notation as dy over du, the rate of change of y with respect to u, times du over dx, the rate of change of u with respect to x. dy over du, since y equals the f function, and the f function changes with respect to the variable u, and dy over dx, since u equals the g function, and the g function changes with respect to the variable x. 
The left-hand side of the chain rule can be written as dy over dx, as f composed with g is dominated by f, which we have set equal to y, and the composition changes with respect to the variable x. Using Leibniz notation, we see the important concept of the chain rule. Rates of change multiply. When calculating derivatives, we will often refer to Lagrange's notation. Composition is written with the function g contained inside the function f. Call the function g the inside function and call the function f the outside function. The chain rule says that the derivative of composition is the derivative of the outside function with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the outside, the inside left alone times the derivative of the outside. For example, this composition has an inside function of x to the fourth minus one and an outside function e to the x. The derivative of the inside function is 4x cubed, and the derivative of the outside function is again e to the x. The chain rule states that the derivative of the composition is e to the power x to the fourth minus one times 4x cubed. That is, the derivative of the outside function with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside function. Some functions will have multiple composition of basic functions. In these cases, the chain rule will be employed multiple times from the outside function to the most inside function. For example, this function has three basic functions, e to the x, containing sine of x, containing x squared plus seven. To take the derivative, we will use the operator d over dx and use the chain rule from the outside inwards. The first time we use the chain rule, e to the x is the outside function and sine x squared plus seven is the inside function. We know the derivative of the outside function is e to the x. Plugging in the inside function as directed by the chain rule, leaving it alone, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which we don't really know yet. It itself is a composition. So we leave the derivative unfinished, so we will proceed taking the derivative of the inside function. Writing d over dx sine x squared plus seven, indicating that we need to take the derivative of the inside function in the next step. We then take the derivative of sine x squared plus seven using the chain rule a second time. The outside function is now sine, whose derivative is cosine of x, and the inside function is x squared plus seven, which differentiates to be two x. We now have the derivative of the full function with just two applications of the chain rule. The chain rule will prove challenging to students who are sloppy with their notation and their algebra. A word of warning, the chain rule will prove challenging to students who are sloppy with their notation and sloppy in their algebra. The best way to remedy these problems is to practice and build good mathematical habits. You've seen the basics. Now work towards mastery through practice and study.